really got to give Phil Graham his due here. Single-handedly, and the Graham family, single-handedly ripped the guts out of the regulation and the oversight that the government had. Uh, let me do a re quick recap for you and then tell you what the consequences are. Uh, in the 1990s, uh, Phil Graham, as senator from Texas, the chairman of the Senate Banking Committee, and uh, when the SEC needs more money because they have 80% more cases, he says, no, no money uh, for you. Uh, certainly you don't get it enough that you need to, to regulate the industries because he doesn't want the regulation. Uh, then we uh, passes two different bills, one in 1999 uh, that is a historic banking deregulation bill, and then one in 2000 that uh, is called Commodity Futures Modernization Act. That leads to two different things. One is there's a wave of mergers. Uh, the corporations get larger. The financial institutions do. They get integrated. Uh, and then he takes all the, the, that last bill that I told you about in 2000, takes away all the caps uh, and oversight that they need from a $62 trillion industry, which, by the way, is four times larger than our stock market. Four times larger. And you know what they did? They said, yeah, an industry that large, yeah, who needs regulation? You know what regulation is? It's another word for it is rules. Rules? We don't need no stinking rules. We're the free market, man. Don't worry. The companies will regulate themselves. And what happens? Enron happens. One of the things that they took away was regulation in the energy industry. And Enron goes, huh, I bet I could do some speculation here and make a lot of money in the short term. It might cause me some problems down the road, but ah, don't worry about it. We're all getting rich anyway, right? Our buddy Phil Graham took away the rules, and he did. And by the way, Enron had been giving money to Phil Graham's campaigns uh, for decades. Then here's where Mrs. Graham steps in. Phil Graham's wife comes in, uh, and she was the head of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, another important regulatory oversight organization. And she said, yeah, let me go ahead and take away some more regulation, more oversight. Enron, have at it, hoss. And they did. And here's a funny, convenient thing that happened. Now, she did that in, I think, about 1992. Afterwards, she gets off of that commission and goes, huh, I'm looking for an employee. Who should it be? Who should it be? Oh, Enron, remember how I helped you guys out? You want to help me out? And Enron's like, fantastic. You go on the board. You know what the board means? That means you don't do any work and you just collect a paycheck. And how much of a paycheck did she collect? 915000 to $1.8 million. Now, Enron was the tip of the iceberg. Now, that became a huge issue in and of itself. And, of course, uh, by the way, Ken Lay, one of, uh, Ken, the CEO of Enron, one of Phil Graham's best friends. Okay? Gee, I wonder how they're running this, who's running it, and who's making money off this thing. Right? So uh, they go and do this, and then uh, the banks, they have, nobody's watching over them now. So they're like, hey, if we take more risk, we'll make more money in the short term. Now, that risk might blow up on us. If it does, yeah, it'll blow up on us. But eventually, if we're, we're a big enough company, we'll go to the government and whine to them. I guess maybe that's what Phil Graham was talking about when he said that we're a nation of whiners. We'll go, oh, but we can't go under. If we go under, the whole economy will go under. So bail us out. And we will, like suckers, right? Because at that point, we'll be forced to, otherwise we're going to have an economic collapse. What we should have done is earlier, we should have, oh, yeah, not lifted the regulations and the oversight of those companies, remove the caps on how much they could leverage uh, the money that they're doing. It's a complicated, uh, the money that they're trading, it's a complicated system. But basically, they remove caps from, you know, if you're going to trade a dollar, uh, if you're going to trade $30, you needed a dollar to back it up. Now, that doesn't seem like much, right? Then they lifted it so that, uh, if you wanted to, uh, to trade $60 worth of uh, these things that they call not just subprime, uh, but also these uh, credit swaps, okay? Uh, you only needed $1, okay? So what happens is they take larger and larger risks with the less of an ability to pay it, pay it off if somebody says, hey, listen, I'm looking to pay that insurance off, right? The one that you bought and the subprimes that you sold to one another. Right? And then when they do that, there's no safety net because there wasn't the regulation in the first place. And then we get into this huge problem. And that's how you get Bear Stearns, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Indy Mac, etc. Now, by the way, uh, after uh, Phil Graham is done absolutely decimating the regulatory system in America with his, is an absolute financial radical, a financial neocon, with his radical positions, he deregulates it, and then he gets out, and who hires him? Who hires him? 
Oh, one of the banks that benefited from the deregulation, Swiss Bank. Who could have figured? Voila, all of a sudden, Phil Graham is rich. Are you rich? No, you're going to get screwed soon. Okay, but they all made money. Now, there's a little bit of irony here because, as you know, be careful what you wish for. Uh, you just might get it. That deregulation wound up hurting the companies too. Enron went under, and Swiss Bank, the person, the company that wanted that deregulation in the first place, and that hired Phil Graham to kind of give him a little reward after, lost 37 billion dollars in the subprime mortgage meltdown. That was e e equal to four years of profits for them. Well, you know why? It turns out deregulation hurts the companies too, hurts the corporations. You need a cop on the beat. Now these uh, radicals, uh, Republicans, will tell you, no, regulation's a dirty word. You don't need no stinking regulation. But think about it this way. It's somebody that wrote, C. Alexander J., I think, uh, wrote in a my Daily Coast blog on it in a response. They said, imagine if uh, Republicans came to you and said, oh, traffic? We don't need any traffic regulations, green lights, red lights, stop signs, no speeding limits. No, no regulations. Free market driving. You think that makes sense? Of course it wouldn't make sense. It doesn't make sense in, in traffic. It doesn't make sense when it comes to criminal laws. It doesn't make sense when it comes to financial laws. You tell me it makes sense everywhere else for us to have rules. But when it comes to the largest market in the country, say, no, take away the rules, and there won't be any problems. Of course that didn't make sense, and that's why we're in the mess we're in now. By the way, Phil Graham, top advisor to John McCain on the economy.